Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media. Today I have a brand new This Week in EDM for the week of August 2nd to August 8th of 2021. If you're new to this series, the way it works is I'm going over songs that I found This Week in EDM and songs that came out and I do a mini rank of them. The first song that I talk about is the worst song of the week to the last song, which being the best song of the week. And uh, that's how it is. We're in uh, normally four categories of bad, meh, good, and standout. But this week, we've added our fifth and our final category, and they will always be at these five now, as for as long as I can tell. We've added trash, <laughs> the trash category. So now there's trash, bad, meh, good, and standout. So let's jump into it. Our number one, our very first trash song ever on the channel. We've got Trouble, Oh No, by Dark Heart featuring Animal Kingdom. Uh, I hate the the sound, the sample they use so damn much. It's the uh, it's the TikTok, oh no, oh no, no, like sample type thing, and it, it's so awful. Uh, it, I don't even understand why it's in the song. Uh, it's just proof that Dark Heart makes music to get plays and success, not for actual love of music. Uh, I don't believe that any producer that wants to be self-respected or well-respected uh, would have based an entire song around that stupid TikTok sample. Um, okay, rant, rant over. Uh, despite that, the song is still, it's a boring Deep House track, so that's trash. Uh, we also have a second trash song this week, and it is uh, Hit It by Black Eyed, Peach, Black Eyed Peas featuring Sweetie and Lele Pons. Uh, this thing is just, uh, just awful. Uh, it's got the most basic reggaeton beat with just raunchy lyrics that are supposed to be sexy, but just sound dumb. Uh, he replaces the word, or I guess Will I Am replaces the word shit with this mechanical noise on the last verse, uh, and it's it's really just bad. I, I I don't get why people would even like this in any capacity. Uh, moving on to the bad category now, songs that I believe are 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 bad. Uh, we've got Can't Come to the Phone by Martin Jensen, Amber Van Day, and NFI. It's another deep house cut uh, that's tailored for commercial success. The lyrics are dumb and annoying, and the production really isn't overly impressive. And that's just where it is. Up next, I might get some flack from this, but our fourth worst song of the week is Bounce by Vest Green and Pegboard Nerds. Uh, yeah, I just I just can't get behind this track. Uh, the intro feels so formulaic and boring, and then the drops, uh, they're just downright annoying to me. Uh, it seems like they really didn't know what they wanted to do with this track, and so they slotted in a bunch of random sounds and sounds from different genres into just hoping something would hit, and none of them did for me. So that's why the song is here in the bad category. Up next, we've got Forget You by Yves V, uh, Robert Falcon, and Jimmy Clash, which are two great last names, by the way. Falcon and Clash? That is great. Uh, a fairly basic big room house track uh, off of Spinning Records here. Uh, I was not overly impressed with the song, though, and felt that the uh, build and drop were disconnected, uh, and the energy that brought in versus what it was expected to bring in, if that makes sense, it just felt, uh, there was just dissonance there. Like, the build had this, oh, it's gonna get there, and then just the drop in was like, oh, that was, that was lame. I, I didn't like that at all. So that was it for that song. Uh, up next, we've got uh, Retrograde Moi. I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm a basic Canadian white guy that only knows English, so... Red, 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 yeah, whatever. K by Kungs. Uh, it's it's um, uh, based off sound design alone. I don't think it's really that bad of a song or bad by any means. Uh, but I think the song is just the definition of repetitive. You literally hear the entire song in the first 20 seconds. So that's why it's in the bad category. Moving into the meh category now, that songs that I don't know, I didn't really like, maybe you will enjoy a little bit more. Uh, we've got Skin Under by uh, Insane Like. Uh, a very fond name that I'm sure some of you, uh, if you know it, uh, you haven't heard it in a very long time. Uh, it's a funky track with a lot of spunk and a lot of uh, vocoder actually used. Uh, it's a lighthearted, not so serious track, but falters when it comes to the repetitiveness of the track and how little it offers in the world of uniqueness. Up next, we've got Never Gets You Back, uh, Arm & Hammer and Kazlo featuring Kwesi. Uh, Arm & Hammer is very hit or miss for me. Uh, they either produce a solid, unique, creative mellow dub track uh, or a super formulaic, formulaic and boring mellow dub track. Uh, and this is kind of sadly the latter. The whole thing felt super linear and, uh, and just quite flat in terms of its dynamics. It felt like it really didn't get high one way or another. And so it's, uh, that's, that's where it is. 
Up next, the Winner's Anthem by Kashmir and Zephyr. Zephyr? Uh, whatever. Uh, so the track, uh, the title of this track is Perfect. It's an uplifting, anthematic track that feels like it belongs in a stadium sung by thousands of sports fans. And the hard style nature of the song helps a lot with the energy and pacing. The reason I have it here in the Mac category, though, is because uh, it's not really for me. It feels very much like a Eurocentric song that is meant for football matches. And so me, again, being my Canadian white guy self, I just didn't relate to this song as much as I think. I, I wasn't the intended audience for this song. Up next, we've got uh, Mermaid by Milk. Uh, the song had a fun atmosphere and thematic, but really wasn't uh, for me. The track felt quite linear. Again, I keep saying that about a lot of songs this week. Uh, and in the end, just uh, just an average song with little to no replay value for me. It was something that I heard for the first time, I'm like, okay. And then after that, I'm like, I don't want to listen to the song anymore. And that was it. So not bad, but just, just meh. Up next, we've got I Don't Want to Know by Dub Vision. Uh, it's a pretty grooving house track, uh, but I felt like it didn't have a whole lot to offer after the first drop. The middle section is a tad repetitive and boring, while the buildup is quite basic. Uh, but the drop definitely makes the track shine more than anything else. Up next, we've got Our Song by The Fat Rat and Cecilia Galt. Uh, the Fat Rat is very, very hit or miss with me. Um, uh, but I can confidently say that this is the first song of his that I'm just very meh on. I'm just like, it's not really a big hit and not really miss. It's just, just kind of there. Uh, it's nothing like I've really heard from him before or we've ever really heard from him, at least from what I know. Uh, it's, so it's a great change of pace uh, to something slower and a little bit more loungy. Uh, but with that, I thought it was just, uh, just an okay song. I was glad to see him experimenting some more with, uh, his sound design and what he was trying to go for. But other than that, I was, it was just meh. Up next in the number 10 spot of the week is Wanderer by Tails and Iris Penning. Uh, new Photos of the Sun EP from Tails is out, and here is one of the tracks from that said project. Uh, I've always loved Tails for his unique fusion of Deep House and Future Bass that emphasizes that girthy bass hits on the drop. Uh, and Tails didn't really do that on this track. Um, in nothing really, yeah, it doesn't really sound like as Tails to me in particular, which is not a bad thing, but, uh, I didn't love the Screechy-esque melody line on the drop, and I didn't find, uh, the non-drop sections too interesting either, uh, but I am being a little picky because I, I do really like Tails, and so that's why it sounded a little more negative, but, um, I, I do like the song, or I would say it's mad. Coming into the good category now, songs I think regardless of your listening opinion, I think you would think are good. Uh, we've got Love Runs Out by Martin Garrix featuring g Easy and Sasha Alex Sloan. Uh, I was surprised how much I actually enjoyed this track. It's nothing phenomenal and really is a basic electro pop track, but I think the features really added a lot to the song. And although it doesn't really feel like a Martin Garrix track to me, I think it really could have sounded like any other producer just producing something for the radio. Uh... I was, it was good. It wasn't that bad. I, I'm not complaining too much. Uh, up next, we've got Carpe Diem by, uh, or the Chime Remix, originally by Asuka, A-S-C-A. Uh, I don't really know anything about Japanese music or Asuka for that matter, uh, but boy, do I know Chime. Uh, so while I had no idea what the song was about half the time and the vocals felt uh, quite foreign to me, a little devil... Yeah, uh, <laughs> Chime's remix here is uh, is really quite stellar. Uh, so if you like J-pop and dubstep, you will absolutely adore this track. And I, and I was a fan. Up next, we've got See Ya Another Day by Point Point. Uh, really interesting and super funky track here from Point Point. Uh, it's a fairly minimalistic song that is filled with a, uh, like a wider sound from time to time. It's got like a more... Uh, not quite anthematic, but it's got like a, a chorus sound to it. Uh, with uh, and then the the what's the what's the, what's the, what's the, the uh, like chimey melody line. I, I, <laughs> uh, it sounds like a little like almost bells. No, chimes is the right word. Like a chimey melody line at the top makes it uh, gives it a, a nice wide feel uh, to the song. So I was a fan. Uh, our number six song of the week is Osiris by Tynan and Heritage. Uh, so this is one of the more uh, intenser side of Tynan that I don't overly love, uh, but I can appreciate for its complexity and creativity. I didn't think it was uh, as egregious over the top as some of his other tracks were, and I can only assume that was because of Heritage uh, being a large proponent to that. And by over the top, I just mean like really in your face intense. That's the Tynan I don't particularly enjoy. But this one was a pretty solid song. 
Heading into the top five now, we've got Tectonic by Tommy Trash and Kaiza. Uh, I have not heard anything from Tommy Trash before this track, uh, but this one makes me want to kind of listen to more of what he has to offer. Uh, it's well-produced deep house production with a dark atmosphere, perfect for Kaiza's vocals, and I am a sucker for Kaiza's vocals, and so that's why the song is up here. Our number four track of the week is Eternal by Athena and Smile. Uh, this is just a good future-based track, and that's really about it. Uh, the song is bright and fun has and has good vocals, but uh, otherwise there really isn't anything super unique or new that this track does over any other future-based song. Uh, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I do enjoy it, so that's why it's here. Our bronze medalist of the week, our number three track of the week, is uh, What It Feels Like by Crank Dat featuring KC. Uh, new Crank Dat EP, Sad Robot, is here, or Sab Robot. And while I enjoyed the uh, first two singles a little bit more than this single, um, I really did uh, like what Crank Dat was doing. They kind of pulled back a little bit more from his classic. Uh, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say classic at this point. I was thinking back to the Mechanized Mayhem EP, which I think came out 2020 or maybe 2021. That was just like so loud and aggressive and mechanical, and I didn't like it. And so I like that it's more uh, melody-focused uh, dubstep this time around. And so it's a, it's a solid track, but I think it's actually uh, far from his best. <laughs> Up next, our runner-up track of the week is Save Me by Party Favor. Uh, I did not expect this song to land here, actually, especially with how poorly I thought of his 2020 album, the Isolation One album. I just did not like that. Uh, but this thing slaps. It's like an Electro House halftime fusion sound with a darker operatic sound design in the second half, and it's one of those tracks that uh, feels more critically friendly in that it didn't try to really be um, super pop oriented or go for a more commercial success sound. Uh, and so I, I really like that. And so, um, it's not something I think I'll listen to on a consistent basis, but I recognize it for its, uh, its, its quality for sure. And our number one song of the week in this week in EDM is Reckless by Feed Me and Tasha Baxter. Uh, okay, this is one vibey track with a ton of outrun and synthwave inspirations, and uh, the whole thing just felt so damn nostalgic, and I freaking loved it. Uh, I feel like it need I need to have a motorcycle and like have neon signs above me to like really properly enjoy it. Uh, which, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it's just such a different take from what we've heard on from Feed Me in the past, and uh, I'm I was all for it. I was, a, I was a big fan of it, and I'd like to see more, um, to put it in Monster Cat terms, more like instinct style feed me, like this, stuff that's more calmer and more uh, light is the best way I would put it. But that was it for this week in EDM. Let me know what you guys think of these songs in the comment section below. Uh, my name is Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.